What's up, brother? Literally. What is up, brother? Hey, that was funny. Get it? Because he's my brother. <laughs> yeah. There's a guy. His name is Sketch. He is becoming popular. I will now share an article about this person. He literally is everywhere. Let me pull up the one that I forgot to pull up. He is going to pick. He is going to announce the Texans pick during the NFL um, draft. Who is Sketch? Why are they even asking that question? Of course you know who Sketch is. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know who Sketch is. He's been on every every podcast in the world. Not really. But he went on Theo Vaughn the other day. And that was incredible. I'm that was hilarious. That. I've only gotten through the first 15 minutes, but it's... <laughs> oh my goodness. The, the gets pairing better. between the two of them is fantastic. Yeah. Theo Vaughn. Sketch. In the same room. It's incredible. You got to watch it. So, this guy right here, squinty eye, eyebrows raised. The entire time during that episode, by the way, Theo Vaughn keeps bringing up that he's like visually impaired. Like he can't see. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. He actually can't. Yeah, and that's the he was he's not impaired, but he just he can't, he can't see. see very well. So th this is this is him. He's literally running routes with the quarterback for the Texans. He doesn't um, look like he belongs on a football. No, field. he's hilarious <laughs> too. What's funny is like it was nice to see um, when he did the podcast with Theo. It was nice to see him out of character because that's what he's doing is he's just playing a character with a bunch of quirks. I wonder how much in character and out of character he was. Because he does play a character, but I think for some of that he kind of was, but also wasn't. I don't know. Yeah, it was hard to tell. He might have went in and out of it. Like, he does, he has so many mannerisms. I don't know if he's doing them on purpose or not. Like, he always... It could be that when he plays the, yeah, like when he that. plays the character that he's just... Playing the show a little more actual personality. Yeah, I think he's squinting because he actually can't see. It's probably that, and he also Which always is, does the stuff with his hands. He's always moving his yeah. hands. What's up, brother? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You you just walk up to somebody and put your finger <laughs> up like that, and they just know what you're talking about. Yeah, people are doing it everywhere. I was I saw a clip of ESPN where they were doing that. He's yeah. so he's big into the Texans, so I guess that's like his favorite team. So. It, it's gotten him into the door with the NFL, and now he's going to literally announce one of the draft picks. That's crazy. I think it's just it's just hilarious that you take an average guy and you just blow him up to make him famous. Yeah, and hilarious. so what happened? He was working. Um, he kind of worked with his family to do some like real estate type stuff. Was what he was doing. So he would like buy the land, and then his dad or someone else would. Um, like I guess do the housing part of of that, so it was kind of like a tag teaming. But he just worked from home a lot of days, and he didn't really. <laughs> he's working from home with his family, so he's basically just living at home. And then he turned that um, into where he's at now. And how he got there was he just started streaming, and um, I think he was kind of saying like it was kind of slow during 2020 or something like that. Or or maybe even more it was slow during that. 2020. Um, it was so he took advantage of that and just started streaming, literally just for fun. And he has some hilarious clips. Like when he when he starts getting mad and starts raging, it's hilarious. But also he does like he's actually pretty good. He can play Madden and stuff. And um, his celebrations are the best. And he'll be like acting like the quarterback and doing all the cadent cadences like Tuesday, Tuesday. And he does all this. Yeah. So he's waving his hands uh, like literally like he's a quarterback on the field. And he's like, he gets into it. Yeah, he's good. That's what people like is the is the character. That's the only that is what you have to do as a streamer is you have to be 
a character that people enjoy watching. You know, with him, yeah. it's just just it's like an innocent kid persona. Yeah, it's he's like watching good. a little kid. Yeah, his celebrations kill me. There's just one like, where just he's... look up any clip on YouTube. Just look up <laughs> ske- <laughs> sketch funniest moments com- compilation. Yeah. There's one where he gets he gets down on the ground like a dog and lifts his leg up like he's peeing <laughs> on the Santa and he goes around yeah, like a little Santa statue. He just, it is hilarious. And he goes around, he hits up Mrs. Claus, and then he goes back to his game. He had just gotten a touchdown or something, but yeah, the little blind kid sweeping the nation. I wonder. You always got to wonder, and I want to say it. I want him to be popular for a long time, but I wonder. If it'll blow up and then he just kind of disappears or what? I hope he just sticks around because I do like him. But you see this from time to time where someone gets super popular out of nowhere. Um, and then it's almost like the faster that you grow, the faster that you get like just disappearing. No one ever remembers like who you were. Like kinda you don't want to just be a, a meme. Yeah, but he's a little more steady, I feel like. Yeah. Well, he he's interesting because he keeps having on special guests. He's kind of taking a page out of Joe Rogan's book rather than just having... I think he does have a podcast where it's just him, but his main show, uh, which is called This Past Weekend, he's always got on... Big names. It could be random people with a cool story or it could be somebody famous. He literally had a garbage man from New York City on his show. Yeah, which I was, it was like, actually good. I... Wouldn't have thought to do that, but that is actually a very interesting story. Cool. And it was. I listened to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And I went back and listened to another one of a Border Patrol agent. Hmm. That was actually interesting. He got kind of repetitive that. after a while because it was like, yeah, we got a problem yeah. with the border. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's pretty much probably going to be the Yeah, people keep getting past the border. About. What's yeah. the problem with the border? Doesn't keep people out. Oh, well, tell me why. <laughs> they just keep going for an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll have people Hold like on. that on, and then he'll have like the biggest names that you can think of. And he goes on Joe Rogan. Um, but yep. he's had I mean he's had Sketch he's been on. on there a couple times. Yeah, he had um, Sketch on recently, which was a very good move. I knew that would happen down the road, but I didn't yeah. expect it to happen so quickly. Yeah. I think they probably just he wanted to be on there and they are very good together, and I think they probably knew that, that they would be really funny together. So there, yeah. that was a really good episode. I'm almost done watching. I think I got about like 40 minutes left. I'm like an hour and 20 in, maybe 30. I've um, got like the whole thing to finish. I only got like 20 minutes into it before it. I got distracted. But, you know, the funny, yeah. the, some of the really funny episodes too is when, uh, he had he's had Jordan Peterson. Theo Vaughn has had Jordan Peterson on like yeah. two or three times. That was some of the most interesting dynamic between the two of them. You got someone who's so phil- philosophical, and you got someone who's thinks he's uh, philosophical, but just says it in plain layman's terms. Yeah, Theo well, Vaughn does kind of get a little deep sometimes, though. So. He does, but that's what's funny is you got a silly guy that tries to get really deep, and then you got a really deep guy that. That's a deep thinker and trying to act silly. Yeah. And it worked. It was yeah, those funny. episodes are funny. He, he's honestly... Some of his best clips have come from that. He's one of my most listened to um, podcasts up there with Joe Rogan. Those are really the main two podcasts that I'll listen to. Is one with Theo Vaughn and, uh, and Joe Rogan stuff. Because they both have really, really good guests on there. Um, Theo Vaughn's even has some like UFC fighters on there. And those yeah. episodes were really interesting too, because they're like champs, and then you see like, hmm, you get to know a little more about them. I rotate even between expect. Theo Vaughn, Joe Rogan. I feel like I'm gonna miss one. Jordan Peterson, depending on who they have as a guest, if they have someone yeah. I really want to listen to. Yeah, but they're good. Those are all good ones. All so, right, what you got? Topic. You heard of Rabbit R1? Maybe. It's this AI device. It's not a smartphone, but it's a little square. It comes in some fun colors. It's called the Rabbit R1. It has a little display screen. 
it has a camera and it has a button that you use to activate the AI so it starts listening to you. What's really cool about it is that it uses just natural language. So you know when you do a Google search, sometimes you'll have to go in. You have to do this with ChatGPT also. Yeah. You have to go in, you have to type it a certain way. And if it doesn't understand you, it doesn't get it quite right, you have to go back, retype it again into some ter- use more terms, use more verbiage. Mm-hmm. With this, it showed videos of people saying things like, and it was back to back to back. So you're t- as it as if you're talking to a real person. So one of the example videos, cool. uh, and it actually worked, was the guy said, hey, I want to go on a weekend trip somewhere nearby. Uh, find me some really cheap flights. I want to eat at some inexpensive restaurants, and I want to do a little bit of sightseeing. You can't put that into a Google search no. string after str- – because that's a string of commands right there Yeah, when you're stringing those together. So in that request, you're asking, figure out where I want to go figure out where I'm going to eat, figure out where I'm going to stay and give me a flight. But with the, the catch that it needs to be a cheap flight, inexpensive restaurants. So there's commands and then there's conditions for those commands. Yeah. And it was able to do all of that back to back. It wasn't very quick, but it connects to yeah. either Wi-Fi or I guess your phone's hotspot or something. I don't really know how it connects to the internet other than Wi-Fi, but apparently it was at CES. Um, and it's all over YouTube if you mm. want to watch it. That is interesting. Yeah, some of the, like, what's cool with the AI is it tries to think more like a person. So I think, like, part of how it was trained is, like, you give it a series of things. So if I say, like, A, B, C, what's next? It's going to be D. Mm. Like, it just, you kind of get trained on these. If this is what is the sequence of things like what would be next like it it kind of can predict it's like predicting um what what you want and what comes next in a sequence like that so if you can figure out the first part and figures out the next part and puts them together then it can it can do a lot of really cool things i've been using it a lot at work just in like um like i don't do a lot of like coding and scripting and stuff but um there's just been a few times recently where um, I, I could have manually done something where I put in, uh, let's just say like email addresses on a spreadsheet. I need to fill this entire thing out. And all I had was their first name and last name. And actually just their username. And so I was able to string this whole thing together and, and tell it how to get like the formatting of our email addresses. I told it um, like create a script where I can give you the username and then you find the email address associated with it. Um, and, and just like all this really, really cool stuff. And it worked. Um, but it also, <laughs> it's funny because it, it'll mess things up too. So then you tell it like, um, hey, I got this error. And I didn't even think about that. Like, oh, it didn't work. What do I do now? But I literally yeah. just said, hey, this is the error message I got. And it was like, oh, my apologies. And then it would write me a new one and it would fix that. And I would tell it like, instead of um, me just typing in one username, put a spot in the code, like make a table or an array where I can just dump like 400 usernames. And so then it would make adjustments to the code because there's a million ways you could write the same thing. It just depends on what you want. So it, mm-hmm. it did all of that for me. Really cool. And you either could have spent hours uh, in training classes or taking online courses and spending money on certifications, yeah. or you or. could just ask this thing to write it and get it on the fly. The only thing mm-hmm. is you have to train yourself with how to interact with it. You have to train your brain to, oh, I need to code this, rather than thinking automatically, oh, I just can't do it, or somebody else will have to do it. That's you its have to own tra- train skill. your oh. brain. Yeah, train yeah. your brain to think. Okay, I wonder if I can. How can I use AI in this situation? And what I've learned too is the more descriptive you are um, with exactly what you want, the better results you're going to get with AI. Versus with yep. a Google search, you literally can't do that. You have to be very vague because you got to get the buzzwords and and certain keywords that will trigger a search. So if I do like cheap restaurants, that's going to be better than me saying like, Hey, um, I want like a cheap restaurant where I can pay like under $15. 
Um, but I also want like a variety of options where it has this type of food and this type of food. Maybe I want a mall. Maybe I want this. And oh, I also want it really close to like a place where I can go shopping and get that. Like you, you can't do that in a Google search. You can't just be that descriptive. You could say cheap restaurants um, under fifteen bucks, or you could say or cheap whatever, like, restaurants. Yeah, Nashville. near a mall or cheap, you know, whatever. But it's probably not going to do a very good job of that. And you can be very descriptive with what you want with AI. And the thing is, you can't use common language. Mm -hmm. Like people don't talk oftentimes how they Google search, or at least I hope they don't. Yeah. Like saying like. You like. can make a request. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can use like, or I think in the video example, they said, yeah, find me a cool restaurant. And then they cool. just moved on to the next request. Cool is subjective. Cool is a descriptive word. Yeah. That a computer's not generally going to understand if you use that in a Google search. Mm -hmm. So I guess what it's really doing is using interpretation. So how exactly? So is Rabbit just like the Chat GPT function where you're talking and it talks back? Yeah. It's just a little square with a screen and a camera. Um, and it's just it's strictly just an AI assistant. I think it was really smart though to have it sell in a bunch of really colorful options mm -hmm. and also on the screen it's a little rabbit head that's talking to you huh. so it seems like it's being marketed as something uh that's a toy almost with the colorful options it seems more like a toy and then when you use a rabbit it seems all sweet and innocent yeah because if they had used like a robot and called it something else for all the marketing, um, yeah. something a little scarier like AI mind reader. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be well. it's gonna be a lot more intuitive for people when they're just like talking and can have a conversation because like we grew up as this is like you know technology got a lot better with all the Google searching and all like having smartphones. Like we grew up with that, but like a lot of old people, they don't know what in the world's going on, and so they're kind of talking to. Um, like their voice dictation and they talk to like Google search as if it's just like a person and it should just know what they want and then they get mad when it doesn't work. Well, with this, if it can kind of just get what you're trying to say and do a lot of the thing, like how to get that search for you, then that's pretty helpful because sometimes like I'll use Copilot, which also is like an AI thing and I'll search for something and I give the context of what I'm doing and it'll say searching for blank and it's only like one or two words and so it's searching for this thing I'm guessing through Google and then it kind of finds the context of what I was talking about and feeds it into um, just like puts it in plain words as to what I want and then once it finds that I can say well I really wanted this or simplify this or explain this and it goes more in depth so I think it'll just be more user friendly than having to learn what to search and scroll through 40 articles. Which the co the argument's a little more complicated than this, but it's funny that that's what it goes back to is whenever they're talking, and it's very cringy. If you see an old person talking to Siri or talking to Google yeah. search, it's like, I do not understand this request. Take me to that restaurant down there past uh, where you get off 840 and it's past the Arby's. I did not yeah. find Arby's in your contacts. Yeah. Well, Siri's an idiot. I mean, we, we know yeah. Siri's stupid, but yeah. um, one day... Then they hate AI, AI. progression in that field, and yet that's really what's going to solve that problem, is that's something you can talk to like it's a person. Mm -hmm. Which Apple is... I think I've started seeing some nudist articles where... You know, they're kind of falling behind in the voice assistant, yeah. and especially with AI. I think they are trying to negotiate with Google's AI to I see if seen they're too. able to use that um, for their next iOS update, which is iOS 18 that comes out later this year. If they don't get that worked out soon, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't but know they're why falling Google behind, would so yeah. it would be in their best interest if they could get that worked out but like that's a whole market like apple i'm pretty sure they are the largest company in the world so it's hard well, when you're at least when you're small like you can 
you can grow and it would be rapid growth to where you doubling and tripling your money as like an investor, let's say. But if you're one of the largest companies in the world, it's really hard to like grow substantially because you're already so large the only way or one of the easiest ways i think to grow your company even more is to get into a new market like a new area that you're not already in and that's kind of how i think they can kind of continue their growth otherwise they're just selling products and let's be honest the past five iphones are kind of the same thing i mean they seriously are. they're the basically past five the same ipads thing. the past yeah. five watches the past two airpods yeah i mean they're all it's just kind of the same thing every single year it's just slight improvements and so people used to buy iphones and stuff more frequently um but now they're just like well i'll just i'll just wait or i'll just get this and i'll keep it for five years and basically just wait till the battery on the thing is terrible and i have to get a new one i mean that's the only reason people get new phones anymore it's like oh my battery doesn't last all day anymore and so then they get something new i think that's probably the main reason um but it'd be a huge opportunity if they actually can get into ai but they've they've have you heard of maggie have you heard of that so i think that was apple's version of dolly um where like it creates images is dolly is like chat gbt's imaging create like creation so i tell it to make a picture of a dog eating a carrot blah 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 blah, and it makes that picture um and it, it just generate like four or five versions of it so that's what dolly is now i think apple had a version of that that just didn't roll out it was like more i guess closed source or whatever um just for test testing purposes but i don't think it was nearly as good and i don't know i'm kind of thinking apple they may not get into this space very well, but they're they're usually the people that come in last, and then they kind of have a better polished version. But with this, I feel like it's very impor important to jump on it early, so you have all that training and data, because these other versions are only going to get better. And if you don't roll something out, you're just behind. It's hard to catch up, I think. But what do I know? Well, the it's just a guess. Uh... Well, with the majority of people in the U.S. using iPhones, the one of the things that might be holding AI back right now is the fact that people will use an iPhone because it's an iPhone and that's all that they will use. Mm -hmm. And if iPhone waits another five years before they have some polished version of AI, that's probably going to hold it back a lot more than if they just jumped on now. Yeah. They have such a huge advantage. Like So many people use... Um, their iPhone, but you could say the same thing with Microsoft where all the companies use Windows for the most part. I mean, you know, the vast majority of companies are not using Macs. Um, they're going to be using Microsoft and Windows. So I feel like they, they're they both large enough to where they could, either one of them could do very well. It's just kind of shocking that Apple hasn't put something out there for people to use when, I mean, we were using ChatGPT, the like, first versions that it came out maybe like a year or more ago um maybe two years i don't even know when this first started but they haven't done anything it's kind of weird well you got anything else no you, you don't i don't well this was fun then okay i guess we're done yeah i, no, we, I really don't have anything else only thing, other thing I can think of, this one might just have to be a short one, but um, the whole like stuff with TikTok, have we really talked about that getting banned? I don't know if we have. Was it, I think we I know did in that episode that was that never came out. Come out, huh? Well, TikTok is supposed to get get banned, or they are going to be forced to sell um, because it's like. It's the whole thing with like China and and all of that. They're either gonna have to sell um, security the and or selling you know, data, you know, all that our stuff. trust. Yeah, actually, no, we did talk about that um, on the main podcast a little bit. I remember that. Um, yeah. Dredge had an interesting perspective. He likes to it play devil's like it, advocate a little bit. Well, it looks like it actually is gonna happen though, because they've been talking yeah. about it for probably about a year now. 
But yeah. it looks like it actually is going to go through, which I am fine with. Yeah. Well, I think uh, what I I'm said. I'm fine in... with it just being TikTok. I don't know what they're trying to sneak in with. What, yeah. what they're going to, they're going to say this is about TikTok and they're going to blame it on that because that's an easy target, I guess. But they're probably going to use this bill after the, it gets passed uh, to start doing some other stuff that's a little bit more controlling. Yeah. I don't remember which episode that was, but y'all should check it out. Because I think what I was basically saying in it was that it kind of doesn't really address the issue of security. They're just kind of going after a company. Um, it's, it's like very, very targeted versus like, well, hey, shouldn't you have something to where you can't just listen in on, on whatever? Because like the terms and services are ridiculous. I mean, they have access to your camera, to your microphone, to everything. Um, but to be honest, I don't think they're the only ones doing that. It's just I think they're just labeling it. Um, it's like, oh, this foreign country is taking all of our data. And it's like, well, you know, yeah, that's not good either. But let's not just go after one company. Like other companies could probably do the same thing. Um, and but, are. And probably are. But Oh, yeah. I did have two thoughts. So one, um, a lot of those, speaking of Apple and AI, uh, Apple removed a lot of AI apps off its app store recently. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Terms of service agreements and security stuff or what? No, no, nothing serious. It's just people were using them to um, generate pornography. So oh. Apple took them off the app store because the AI was generating nude images, apparently. Yeah, it can do that. <laughs> it can also create, tell you how to create bombs. Um, yep. It can... Be used for hacking. Here, what other trigger words Viruses? can I say into this smartwatch? Have Bombs. you seen this video? It's this guy, and he's like, it is very illegal to say, I'm going to kill the president of the United States. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying don't say that, because if you were to say, I'm going to kill the president of the United States, that, hypothetically, that wouldn't be good. And it would be very bad to tell you that you can do it on top of this building, and that way you have the clearest line of sight to the president. Not saying that. Very illegal. Like, he just goes on and on and on for like a minute and a half straight, <laughs> basically saying he's going to kill the president of the United States, but he's not How many actually times are you going to say it? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't think it's illegal. But he's saying, like, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, hypothetically. If it's I like did. Really if I did. So, Yeah. Anything I'll probably else? get some FBI people knocking on the door. I'm really not though. I'm just I'm just saying like Well that's what he said and look what happened. Yeah. Actually I don't know what ever happened to that guy. All right, if we don't make it back. Yeah, we never heard from him you know again. Where I am. So that's not really a good thing. You never know. I guess we'll find um, out. Well, then See the if other, we come back other, on the next one. Yeah, if we don't if you never hear from us again. Help. The other thing I was going to say is with Rabbit R1, um, I think if I had to guess, that company's main goal is probably to get bought out. That's probably most companies' goals at this point. You, you know what I mean? They come up with something that's just AI. It's not a smartphone competitor. They would probably do very well if they can create a solid product and do all the work. Like That's what Apple would do, honestly. That's what made me think of it. Apple... Apple didn't create Siri. They bought her from some other company and then changed her. Siri hmm. existed before it was Apple's. Then Is Apple Rabbit done the a thing, bunch of other stuff. Does it clip on your shirt? No, that's something else. That's okay. another one. That's the clip on your shirt with a little camera. Yeah, that's something else. It's We're similar because so this many. is also a little square. Yeah, and I, I think that might be what these companies are trying to do is just do something really well and then get bought. Apple yeah. also, uh, when they started doing their fingerprint readers, uh, they bought that technology. They bought a company that did that, and then they put it in their phone. I don't know. It's just interesting. They never yeah. come up with anything original. Nothing's ever original, especially for Apple at this point. They're just like, eh, we'll just buy it. You know, we got enough money just to buy some other company. But it'd be really, really cool to see Apple put something in Siri or some kind of AI thing that's useful because then you have Microsoft, Google, and Apple and they're all competing and then we just get a better product. That's what I yeah, want. We reap the benefits. Instead we just really have Gemini and ChatGPT 
Uh, Gemini's are right. They're okay. They're Not okay. Great. I think it'll be. I think it'll be a lot more like just normal in like five or ten years, and it'll be like we'll probably have something that's a lot better, and we'll look at this version and say that was terrible. Same way we look at really old iPhones and think I can't believe we ever used that, and then now it's like a million versions later we have something that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. So, but all right, yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. So. I guess maybe next time, next week, we'll have everyone together, hopefully. Um, next episode that comes out. But for now, you got us. So hopefully you enjoyed. Peace. Brothers. Peace out, brothers. Peace Sorry out. Sorry for coming.